What's up YouTube, my name is Alex and this video is all about the Fujifilm X-Pro1. I purchased this camera one year ago and it's really exceeded my expectations for such an old camera. There's a lot of value in these older Fujifilm cameras, especially if you're a photography first type of person and you don't need all the latest and greatest specs. So in this video, I'll talk about what keeps me coming back to this 11 year old camera and try to answer the question, is it still worth shooting with? Buying the X-Pro1 was the first time I ever felt like I got more than what I paid for. I got a really good deal and paid $330 for the camera body. I know the prices have gone up quite a bit since last year, but you can still find some deals here and there. So let's talk about image quality because I know that's probably the most important thing here and I know a lot of Fuji shooters want to see what the photos look like straight out of camera with this notorious X-Trans 1 sensor. So I'll make sure there's plenty of sample images of JPEGs straight out of camera. I've been really impressed by the image quality out of the X-Pro1. I never felt like I needed more resolution than the 16 megapixels of this sensor. The colors straight out of the camera are great. Images are full of detail and I couldn't be happier with the results I've had so far. It's really just been a fun camera to document life with. I do want to clarify that any of the example photos that I show that aren't labeled straight out of camera are raw images that I edited in Lightroom. On my previous video about the X-Pro, I got a lot of questions about that, wondering if the photos were straight out of camera. So even though I am perfectly happy with the JPEGs that come straight out of the X-Pro, I tend to edit the raw images because I do enjoy that process and it gives me a little bit more flexibility with editing. Besides the image quality, I love the optical viewfinder this camera has. It's always bright and clear, and you still get a lot of the shooting information displayed in the viewfinder, like your histogram, settings, and exposure compensation. I spend a lot of time looking at screens all day, so it's really refreshing having an optical viewfinder in this camera. And of course, you do have the option to use the electronic viewfinder as well. Look, I know every Fuji shooter on YouTube goes on and on about this, but yes, the shooting experience is what keeps me coming back to the X-Pro1. It's really brought me back to the basics with no fancy specs, only the essentials with the shutter speed dial, exposure compensation, and the aperture ring on the lens. This camera has reminded me a lot of two other Fujifilm cameras that I really love to shoot with, which were the X100F and the GFX 50R. I think it's the perfect combination of the two being a little bit larger than the X100 series with the convenience of having the interchangeable lenses and a little smaller than the GFX 50R, which makes it a little bit easier for everyday shooting. The shooting process does mimic the feeling of shooting a film camera without the associated costs that come with it. I also love the rangefinder style design of these cameras. They're small, they're compact, and they're really stylish. The combination of the optical viewfinder, the physical dials just make it a really enjoyable shooting experience. Now, I don't think this is a replacement for shooting film, but if you're after a similar experience, this is as close as you're gonna get with a digital camera. One of the only cons I have with this camera, which is more of a limitation, is the processing and shooting speed. It's a little laggy in between shots, and although the autofocus is really precise, it is slow, which is understandable considering how old this camera is, and the processing speed is a little laggy in between shots, but I think this camera is more than capable of capturing some action. It does have a continuous shooting mode, but I wouldn't rely on autofocus tracking. If you're a street photographer and you're looking to capture brief moments, you're probably better off shooting manual with zone focusing. Mm -hmm. 
Now I did have one major problem with my camera after the first few months of using it. While I was on a trip to Mexico, the shutter button stopped firing. And I knew this would eventually happen because I noticed every now and then the shutter button started to wear out and it wouldn't fire, but it slowly got worse over time until it stopped working altogether. I have heard that other people have the same problem with their X-Pro cameras, but the good news is I found a company in Pasadena, California that was able to fix the problem. The shop is called Video Cam Repair and I'll leave all their information in the description just in case someone has the same issue, maybe they can help you out. They replaced the shutter unit and the switch rack holder which is just underneath the top plate. The cost of the repair was super reasonable and it only took a few weeks so for me it was totally worth getting this camera fixed otherwise it would have just been an expensive paperweight but after the repair, I'm about $600 total into this camera, and I know that might sound a little crazy for such an old camera, but I'm happy with the purchase, even with the cost of the repair. For the same price that these X-Pro ones are going for on eBay, you can find a technically better camera with higher megapixels, 4K video, and faster shooting speeds. Something like the X-T2 or the X-T3. If you're a photography first kind of person and you don't need all those specs, this could be a good choice for you. So is this camera still worth shooting with? Absolutely yes, but for the right person and depending on what you plan to shoot with it. Whatever camera you decide to use, it should be inspiring to pick up in the first place. For me, the X-Pro1 has been a total joy to use. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the X-Pro1 and whether you think this camera is still worth picking up and shooting with. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow here on YouTube and it's much appreciated. So thanks for watching. See you next time.